Hello, this is a strength and balance class. And today a little bit different, we will use uh, a towel, a small towel like this that we're gonna sometimes keep uh, taut for just uh, some little arm work and back work. Also your weights, I have three pounds weight. You can do one or two pounds, maybe up to five pounds, but not much more. And we may need to uh, block, so have your blocks also ready. And let's come to stand. Feet parallel to one another. You can actually look at your toes. And uh, come back upright, look straight forward, lift your toes, open your toes wide, bring your toes down and try to keep the space in between the toes if you can. Let's do that again, lift your toes. Open your toes and keep them apart. Bring them back down on the floor. And once more, lift your toes, open your toes and bring your toes back down. And then start to shift forward on your toes and on your heels. So you see when I shift forward, I feel really all the weight of the body into the toes. And when you shift back, you feel even your toes are lifting. That's okay. And you can do it this way. And then come back right at the middle. So you're not so much onto your toes, not so much into your heels, right in the middle. Little bend in the knees. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, bring your arms down. Let's move with the breathing. Inhale. Exhale. So what's important to do, just like yoga, we need to breathe. We need to be aware of the breath. Inhale. As you exhale, bring your hands together. Draw your hands in front of your heart. Interlace your fingers. Push your palms out. And you can bend your knees. And then stretch your back forward. Uh, stretch your back back. And stretch your arms forward. Tuck your chin in. You'll feel a good stretch in your mid-back and your upper back. And from here, come to your chair pose and lift your arms up. So a mini chair pose. It doesn't have to be a big chair pose. You want to make sure still your knees are bent and, and then not, they don't pass your toes, but they are in the same direction as your toes. And by interlacing our hands, it helps to keep our shoulders a little bit more uh, stable. So we feel stronger in your upper back and the mid back. And then inhale, push through your heels, come all the way up to stand and release your arms down. So I'm gonna repeat that again. Readjust your feet so they are parallel to one another. And let's again, again, inhale, exhale, push your palms out. Inhale, up, exhale, down. Inhale, palms up, exhale, palms out. Inhale. Exhale, keep your hands together and really push your hands towards one another and bring your hands in front of your heart. Now you're gonna repeat the same, but we're gonna change the cross of our fingers. Keep your knees a little bit bent, stretch your arms forward. And if you want to round your back, even do a little pelvic, pelvic tilt and uh, yeah, in the pelvis, a pelvic tilt and stretch your arms forward, push your back away from your arms and your arms away from your back. Now keep that bind in your hands, lower your hips a little bit more, coming to your second chair pose, reach your arms. Your arms can be level with your ears if it's okay, otherwise have your arms a little bit lower. Tuck your chin in, maybe go a little bit lower into your chair now. Keep breathing. And inhale, push for your heels. Come all the way up to stand, exhale, bring your arms down and bring your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers again and draw your knuckles down, lift your heart, shoulders back, lift your chin just a bit. And make sure you're still breathing deeply, inhale. Exhale, you're gonna keep back to you, change the cross of your fingers again and bring your hands by your side like this. So I have my hands on my, left hip 
And if you look in the back, it's about this way. And you can keep actually your the elbow that's on the side, keep it back. So it helps to keep the, the shoulder back. And a little bent in the knees. From here, if your hands are on the left hip, you're gonna tilt your head to the right. Relax the jaw. Bring your chin to your chest. Bring your head to neutral position and you're gonna just bring your, slide your hands on the other side. So you, if you're on your right side, right elbow goes back. So you can feel more your shoulder blades touching or almost touching. Tilt your head to the left. You can relax the jaw, you can open the mouth a bit. And bring your chin to your chest. Release your arms down, shake your arms. Now shake your arms and to work on our balance, you shake one leg and shake both arms. And let's do the other leg. Okay, so let's come towards the end of the mat. Coming to your mountain pose. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, hinge at your hips, fold at your hips, hands on your lower legs. Bring the weight of your body more towards your toes. And just like you did when we were standing, bring your weight back towards your heels and go to your, towards your toes and heels. So I have my hands on my legs. You can have your hands on the floor. You can even have your blocks if they're not too far away from you. Now from here, bend your knees a little bit more so you can place your hands on the floor and let's walk our hands to our plank pose, we do a plank. So plank can be kneeling plank where your knees are on the floor and you can start this way, shoulders away from your ears and pick up your knees off the floor if you want and come into your full plank, trying to keep your, your chin a little bit tucked, belly is in, ribs are in, push the floor away with your fingers. Inhale, and when you exhale, bring your knees down. You're gonna bring the right leg back behind you as if you're coming to a tricky cat pose, except we're gonna keep our hands on the floor. Point and flex, point, flex, point and flex. The foot that is, huh? sorry, point, flex, point, flex. Circle your ankle, circle your foot at the ankle and change the direction. You're gonna bring the knee to the chest and I'm gonna make a big actually loop so I can bring my right foot forward. And this is when it's nice to have the blocks. Again, you don't have two, but I like to keep the, the blocks for my hands so I don't feel like I'm collapsing too much. To get a deeper stretch, so we are stretching and strengthening at the same time, you can bring your left knee a little bit further back. If this, your knee is not comfortable, sometimes by curling the toes under, it feels better. We're more on the bone now, instead of being on the cartilage. And you also, you can pad the knee. Now from here, you keep the, your left hand on the block or on the floor. Inhale, lift your right arm up. You're doing a twisted lunge. Keep the right hip back, squeeze your legs towards one another. Inhale, and when you're exhaling, bring your right hand down and slide your right foot back. You're coming back to your hands and knees. So you can actually use your blocks for your when you're on your hands and knees. I'm not gonna do it because I did not do it on the other side. Bring your left leg back behind you. Leg is spread out to the floor, push the floor away. Make sure belly is in, ribs are in. Point the foot and flex, point, flex. Point, flex, point, flex, and point, flex. Circle your foot.
and go the other direction. Uh, my ankle is cracking today. <laughs> Bring the knee to the chest and you're gonna like to lift your left hand so you make space for your left foot to come forward. So it really depends on the proportion of your body too. You need to do that sometimes. Hands on, the, on your blocks if you did that on the other side. Bring the right knee back, further back. And just stay a little bit upright here. Squeeze your legs, getting into more of a hip flexor stretch. Keep the right hand on the block or on the floor. You inhale, lift your left arm up to come to your twisted lunge. Deep breath in and when you're exhaling, bring the hand down, move the blocks. And actually let's have our blocks so flat. Bring your left knee back. You're back onto your knees. And we're gonna do downward facing dog with the hands on blocks. So of course, you don't have to use the blocks if you're comfortable with that. Pour your toes on the, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. I found it's very nice to do with blocks. space. You can keep your knees bent a bit and think of pushing your hips back. And think of drawing your chest in between your legs. Take a deep breath in. And as you're exhaling, walk your feet to your hands. You can keep a deep bend in the knees. Once you're there, hands on your hips, elbows pointing up. Inhale, come all the way. Take your time to come up. Come all the way up to stand and bring your arms to your side. So we back to our mountain pose, palms facing forward. And let's go back to the breathing. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. So let's take our weights. There can be optional. I'm gonna you show you actually with the towel and with the weight. So we're gonna work on squats. So squats, if you don't wanna use the weights, you go down this way and you keep always the towel taut, that's it. It's the same thing with the weights, except you're holding your weights in both hands. All right, let's do that. So again, towel in front of you like this or arms by your sides if you have the weights and let's start a squat series so you Push your hips back. Because if you're coming to a chair pose, I get, except you're going a little bit lower. Keep your chest lifted. I'm counting. This is six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten. So on ten, we stay here, a little bit halfway here, and we pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold. And come back up. And we go down again. One, two. Squeeze your glutes, make sure you're not feeling in your knees. So use your thighs, your glutes, your core to move this way. Keep breathing also, huh? Eight. Nine. Ten. On ten, we're staying here and we're pulsing. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We hold, maybe we go a little bit lower. We come back up slowly, one, and we keep going. That's our third set and last one. Three, 
Going slowly four, go slowly up, slowly down. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And this is the last one I told you. We hold and pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Go a little bit lower. And then slowly come up. You probably felt your legs. I did. Shake your legs. Bring the weight down towards the top of your mat. And shake. Shake your legs. Tap. You can tap them. Move your feet. Open your feet wider and sway your hips side to side. So to go into a little cardio, and yoga does that. So when we do sun salutation, we go up and down, and the head is lower than the heart. We're gonna do. We're gonna do the same today. So we were down for our lunges. We went back up for squats. Now we're gonna go back down for bridges. So inhale, reach. Come to the end of your mat. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, hinge at your hips. Just linger here into your forward bend. And you feel a good stretch in the back of the legs, especially if you are bringing more of the weight of your body towards your toes. Bend your knees, walk your hands up. We're just going to do one plank just to, because we're here, why not? And bring your knees to the, to the floor. And we're gonna to go to our bridge pose. So if you wanna bring, have a, a small towel or blanket under your head, but not too big, especially when we do bridging, we don't wanna to do too big. Or nothing at all actually, if it's possible. Come to lie down on your back. Make sure that your mid back, mid back is pressed on the floor, your knees are bent, feet flat, tuck your chin in, arms to your sides. And let's start the bridge. So you're going to start to do the pelvic tilt first. So like you are tucking the pelvis. And then inhale, lift your hips, lift your lower back, mid back. And exhale, lower down, slowly down. Barely touching the floor. Inhale, push your feet through the, to the floor, push your hands. Exhale, down. So once you feel your hips are barely touching the floor, you come back up, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, we'll do one more time this way. Exhale. Now, next time we go into the bridge, come into your bridge, doesn't have to be too high. You're gonna lift your right leg up. Leg is straight up to the ceiling. Lower the leg, the right leg, so it's leveled with your left knee. Hold this way, make sure you're still in your bridge. Lower the leg, so it's leveled with your left calf. Stay in your bridge. I know sometimes we tendency to collapse here. And then lower the leg, so it's leveled with your left ankle. So it's almost on the floor. And bring the foot down and lower your bridge down. Go deep breath in and exhale. So I'm going to repeat this on the, for the other leg. Pelvic tilt first, lift your hips, lift your back off the floor. So again, it's more like a diagonal bridge. So not a big bridge, just halfway maybe. Bring the left leg up, toes pointing up. Try to keep your hips up and lower the leg so it's leveled with your right knee. Keep pushing and helps to keep the right foot, pushing the right foot on the floor. Lower the leg so it's leveled now with your right calf. Keep breathing. 
lower the leg so it's level with your right ankle so it's almost touching the floor not quite try to stay in your bridge keep the belly in and bring the foot down slide the foot back lower your hips down good open your feet as wide as the mat and the windshield wiper your knees Come back to center. You want, you may want to bring your knees to your chest and rock side to side. So if you like to do spinal rocking, you may want to roll forward and back on your spine. Or you can do just like me, roll to one side. Come back to your hands and knees. And we're going to do a tricky cat pose here. And you can do the weights or no weights. So, so I'm going to show you with weights, but again, they're really optional here. Bring the left leg back behind you. Take the weight in your right hand. Again, that you don't have to do it with the weight. Right arm forward. And you, when you tap, you tap the hand down and you tap the foot down at the same time. Don't lift the arm too far up. And you're lifting, you're not, uh, you're lifting slowly. Five, six, seven, eight, Lifting slowly, tapping. Good. Release, weight down. If you want to come to a child's pose in between, sit back towards your heels. Deep breath in and exhale. And come to your hands and knees again. Just adjust your knees, move your knees a little bit as you felt. Anything in the knees. Bring the right leg back behind you. Take the weight with your left hand. Make sure your right wrist is under the shoulder. And let's uh, lift and tap. One, two. This is core here. Keep the belly in. Ribs are in. Three, four, five. So weights are too much. Drop them. Huh? And drop this one in. Do just three more. And last one, bring the weight down and to come to your downward dog if you want to take your blocks. I have to say I like it here with the blocks because my mat slides a lot. So when I have the blocks, I don't slide. My hands don't slide anymore. So maybe it's a way also if your mat is sliding somehow. It's not a good quality mat. Sometimes having the blocks, it's easier. So you're in your downward dog. If you want to pedal your feet. And same here, walk your feet up towards the blocks. Hands on your hips. Inhale, come all the way up to stand. And exhale, arms to your sides. A deep breath in. And exhale. So move the blocks to the side so you're not going to Feel like you have to um, there in a way. Take your weights again. So we're gonna open our legs. Bring your right foot out, left toes in. As if you're preparing for your warrior two, which we're gonna do. So you, this is your warrior two, and this is just like the beginning of warrior two. Let's say. Okay, so have your arms. Palms facing up, elbows close to the body. 
when you come to your warrior two, you're serving the trace. And then you bring the legs straight, you bring your arms back. Okay, that's the movement. You can do that without the weights again. And the towel will be too too small to do with the towel. You can use also a resistance band if you want, but today we're using weights or no weights. All right, let's start. Warrior two, you serve the trays and come back. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Let's all hold here. So get into you where you two or you're. Like a mountain pose, ears, shoulders, shoulders, hips align, and do maybe a little pulse in your arms. One, two, three. The elbows a little bit bent, as you can see. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Come back. So your elbows are to your sides. Bring your legs straight. Have your toes so they're pointing forward. And this time, so you're gonna keep your legs straight, feet, toes, yeah, pretty much your toes, uh, yeah, pointing forward, sorry, and feet parallel to one another. All right, make sure your shoulders are relaxed. Now you're gonna serve the trace forward and back. This is three already. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So you're going to have your hands right here. So I'll show you to the side, arms 90 degree, and pulse. One, two, three. Relax your fingers. Eight, nine. 10, good. Arms to your side to give a little break. Yeah, probably have the same distance that you did on the other side for your warrior two. So if not, just adjust to it. Bring your left toes out, right toes in. And you can see when you bend your knee, if your knee is right above the ankle, it's easy to, to be there. You are in your warrior two. Good. Let's bring the right leg straight so we can start the same way we did on the other side. Elbows to the sides. A little bit turn out. When you come to your warrior two, you open your arms and you see you keep a little bent in the elbows. It's much safer for the, the elbows and the shoulders. And then come back. Two. Three. So we're trying to, we feel that obviously in the arms, but we should also engage our mid back. Especially when you are bringing your arms back, try to squeeze your shoulder blades onto your back. Eight, nine, ten. Let's hold here and pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bring your elbows back, legs straight. And this time, bring your arms to your side and bring heel toes, heel toes. All right, so let's drop the weight so you can shake the arms first. And you felt, you know, maybe sometime when you grab on the wrist, um, grab on the weight, sorry, with your fingers, you may feel on the fingers and the wrist. So just shake your fingers and circle your wrists. So you can shake the, the hands this way. Good. Now, I want you to do this position halfway and we're going to add a row this is something is nicely done with the towel also so i'm going to show you first with the towel and if you feel that you can move on to the weight you can do that 
important. So you are feet paired to one another. You can open your feet a little bit wider than your hips, a little bent in your hips. And you're going to start to hinge at your hips. Make sure your towel is taut. You add a row. You bring your arms straight and you come back up. Okay, so you feel like this is enough for my shoulders. Use the towel. If you want to use the weights, try that. And you always have the option to change. All right, let's start together. A little bend in the knees. Hinge at your hips. Arms are straight down. Add a row. So I'm doing a wide row so my elbows go out to the sides. And bring your arms down and slowly up. And let's try to try to go slow, like you're moving in slow motion. Now, if you're really going halfway down and you are feeling your lower back, don't go too far down. Maybe you go right here and that's enough. And you're trying to keep your belly and ribs to the midline engaged. When you are going to your halfway lift and you're adding the row, try to feel that you're pushing your shoulder blades towards one another and then release and squeeze your glutes to come up. It's important. So you're saving your back here. Keep going this way. Sometimes it's nice for me to be quiet so I really get to feel my alignment. And let's do just one more. And come back up. Good. Fine. If you have the towel, you can drop it. If you have the weights, you might want to keep them and just lift your shoulders up. Bring your shoulders down. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Weights or no weights. Come to the end of your mat. I'm gonna work on lunges. So bring the right knee up, big step back. Left knee can be a little bit bent. Bring the left knee up. And I don't have much space here, but you may have more space than me. Bring step back with your left foot. And then we're going to repeat and bring the right foot forward. Sorry. So now we're going to repeat going backward. Bring the right knee up. Big step back with your right foot. Stay in the lunge. Bring the left. This is tricky. Left knee up. Bring the left leg back. And then bring the right foot back. So I'm doing a little step to bring it back. Okay. Let's do that again. I bring the left foot forward now. Left knee up, step forward. Bring the right knee up, step forward. I'm making a little bit more smaller step. First, it's easier to balance and to move the feet. Also, I have more space too. And bring the left foot forward. Good. Now bring the left knee up, bring it back. So we're going backwards. So this is. A little bit more tricky to be able to bring the right knee up and the right foot back and left knee up. Now oh, it's more tricky on one side. 
and bring it down. All right, shake your legs. Okay, let's drop the, carefully drop the weights or think of hinging at your hips when you're dropping the weights. And shake your arms, shake your legs. Let's move the arms. Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale down. Inhale. Exhale. Once more, come to the end of your mat. We're going to go back down to a plank and then coming into our belly. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, hinge at your hips. Walk your, so hands on the floor, walk your hands to the top of your mat. Back to your plank pose. Inhale, and when you exhale, you can bring your knees to the floor to come all the way down to your belly. So for now, stack your hands and your forehead's gonna be on top of your hands. Just adjust your legs. So I like to stretch my legs back a little bit more so I feel that my hip flexors are more on the floor by the front of my hips. Press your feet to the floor. Make sure you're not going to lift your feet when we're going to do that. So feet stay super glued to the floor. And here, you just, you're pushing your hands on the floor and lift a little bit your forehead off the of your hands your arms are still on the on the floor it's like a mini cobra or mini uh, swan in Pilates and then slowly release so you're going to inhale to prepare make sure your shoulders are away from your ears exhale push your hands to the floor push your arms and just lift your head a little bit you're still looking at your hands keep the belly in and then slowly release. It's a nice stretch for the back. So sometimes if it's hard to do cobra or, you know, um, other back bends, this is actually a safe one to do. Inhale again. Exhale. Push your hands. Push your arms. So you are using your arms as a leverage. So you're lifting your chest and look at, still looking at your hands. So your neck staying in the same alignment as your spine and release. Uh, now change the stack of your hands. Now we're going to do um, all together. So your forehead is going to stay on your hands. Press your feet. Pull the navel and lift. Start to, don't, don't do anything else. Just lift your elbows off the floor and shoulders away from your ears. Inhale, and when you're exhaling, lift your hands so your forehead stays attached to your hands. Inhale, exhale, lower down. And then you can relax your elbows on the floor in between. So to prepare, elbows off the floor, sh shoulders away from your ears, press your feet. Inhale, exhale, lift. So it's a little bit more strenuous of a back bend. But we're not using our neck, as you can tell, using your mid back. And release. So if you are feeling your lower back, don't lift too high. Repeat what we just did earlier with just the head off the floor. And also keep really engaging the core. Keep the belly in. All right. Well, again, inhale. Exhale. Lift your arms. So keep pushing your hands against your head, forehead, forehead against your hands. Inhale. Exhale. Lower down. Good. Release your hands. Maybe you can drop your head to one side. Your hands can be above your head. If you want to move your hips a bit, you can do that. So in between, in between before we go back to a different variation of the, it could be locust pose. It could be kind of a swan pose in Pilates. Let's go to a typical Pilates exercise called a single leg uh, kick. Coming to like a sphinx pose, your arms are, forearms on the floor, elbows a little bit. I like to bring my el elbows a little bit more forward because I want to make sure my, the front of my hips are on the floor. So it's just because of the length of my arms, I need to do that. Push your hands on the floor. 
can bring your legs a little bit closer and if it's comfortable for your back. Lift your right leg off the floor, point your foot, and you're going to kick one. So if you kick your heel to your bum, uh, two, and release. And the other side, one, two, and release. One, two, release. Keep the belly in. It's not trying to move. I know I'm doing a little bit, but trying to resist from moving my body side to side. It's just the leg that's moving. And keep trying to keep the belly tight. And you can tuck the chin in so you're looking down at your mat. All right leg, left leg, and one more time, right leg and left leg and relax relax maybe turn your head to the other side that you did earlier and now you are going to take your towel i'm going to place a blanket under my forehead so i can breathe and i can talk to you and you can do the same if you feel your nose is squishing on the, on your mat. So you just place a towel under your forehead and take the towel and place it behind your back. Your hands can be a little bit wider, as wide as your hips or a little bit closer to each other. Good. So here, shoulders away from your ears. So this is a deeper back bend, keeping an engagement in the arms by holding the towel. Keep the belly in, push your feet to the floor, inhale, as you're exhaling, think of just like you had your hands under your forehead, you're lifting your head, your chest in one level, and bring your arms away from your back, push the towel, like as if you're trying to break the towel, and as, as if you're trying to bring the towel towards your feet. Inhale, and when you're exhaling, come back down. And let's do that again. So prepare with your shoulders. You see how the shoulders drop when we're relaxing? So you can keep your shoulders away from the floor and away from your ears. Press your feet, navel is in. Inhale, exhale, lift up. So we're lifting in one plank. I'm not lifting more my chin. You keep your chin tucked. Lift your arms. You should feel, you should feel that in your mid-back. If you're feeling in your lower back, again, go a little bit lower. Or get, do a more of a pelvic tilt, tuck, and keep the belly in. Inhale. Exhale, release. Even when you're releasing, we don't forget. We keep the belly tight. We don't want to relax anytime, okay? So it's important. All right, one more time. Shoulders away from your ears. Tuck your chin in. Inhale. Exhale, lift up. Draw the towels away from your back and towards your feet. Inhale. And exhale, release down. Move the towel. Relax here for a few breaths. Maybe you can stack your hands again or turn your head to one side. You can wiggle your hips a bit. Bring your hands under your shoulders and come to your hands and knees. Go slowly into it. You can open your knees a little bit wider and sit back on your heels, coming to your child's pose. That should feel good for your back. And you're going to come up. And let's turn to our side. You're going to be on your right hip. Stack your knees. You can be on your right arm, right forearm. And this is a lot for your shoulders. You can come down this way. And you have your head resting on your arm. If you're on your arm, on your forearm, make sure that your, your elbow is under your shoulder and push, push your right forearm to the floor so you're not collapsing like this. You want to find a lift uh, underneath. All right, so knees forward, heels aligned with your hips, lift up, 
classical clamshell two three four five six seven eight nine and ten now bring the leg the top leg forward level with your knee point your foot circle the leg one two three four five six seven eight and reverse one two three four five six seven eight bend the knee grab your foot push the foot back this way i should go good from here stack the knee again but you're going to come up completely onto your hip and then have your leg more comfortable you see i'm making more like a zigzag on an m shape with my leg good your right hand is going to be down bring your left arm up and you go down to the little mermaid stretch here. Push up, you go to the other side, grabbing your foot, your left foot, and go to the other side. Notice how it feels different to stretch this way. And let's go back. I often say when I teach Pilates, if you do, we're doing this exercising, it's like the, it's called mermaid, because I think it's like the mermaids waving at the sailors. <laughs> so one more stretch on the right side one more on the left side and you're going to go back to your right side so now let's try that your right wrist under your shoulder and you start to pick up your Hips like this, left arm up and down. So I'm going to bring my knees further back because we're going to add on something or not. Up and down. So it's almost like a side plank. This is three. We do three more. That's it. Four. Five. Six. So this is not happy maybe this is better okay you can repeat those and if you want to add on you're here bring your left leg straight and maybe bring the right leg so the right leg is going to be behind you you're coming to the full side plank inhale and exhale bring your knees back down and uh, Let's switch sides. Shake your wrist if you need. First, preparing for the clamshell. Remember, you can be all the way down or you can be on your left forearm. Make sure you're pushing your arms so you're not collapsing on the side like I'm doing right now. Knees pointing forward, heels aligned with your hips. I just have my right hand in front here, but not too much as a support. When you lift, when you are lifting the leg, by the way, make sure you're not rolling out this way. Your hips, and if you're not sure, place your right hand on the hip. The hips should not roll back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And eight. I think we did eight on the other side. Yeah. Bring the leg straight. So now it's level with the other knee. Point your foot circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Reverse. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, I bring back, stacking the knee, come up, set up for your 
uh, mermaid stretch. So your right leg, your top leg can be a little bit more on the floor. Again, if you're looking at your knee, you're making like a, almost like an M shape. Your left hand is on the side, let's stretch. You can come onto your forearm if you want to get a deeper stretch and then push up, go to the other side. Oh, that feels so good. And then go to the, the first side. This how we notice how easily we can be tight and it feels so good to stretch. I could do that forever. I have no idea how many we did on the other side. Let's do again on this side. Bring the hand down. Maybe do a little bit more stretch. So now, if you felt that was difficult to lift, you prepare on your forearm or just, you know, skip that part, go back maybe to a clamshell. There's, you know, different ways. But keep moving. That's important. All right. So you have your left wrist here. I mean, you have to adjust. Bring the right arm up and just lift for now. One and down. And bring my hand a little bit more forward for me. Two, because when you lift up, you want a shoulder above your wrist. Three. Four. Five. Remember, you can do it this way. Keep going. I'll show you the other way. It's six. Seven. Eight, nine, and ten. So stay here if you want. We'll come down. Bring the right leg straight. So your top leg is straight. That's the first kneeling side plank. And bring maybe the left foot back behind to come to your full side plank. I know. <laughs> Smile. Inhale, exhale, lower down. Ah, bring your legs in front of you. Interlace your fingers, a little bit like we did at the very beginning. Circle your wrists. You can have your legs crossed, your legs straight, doesn't matter here. And circle your wrists. The other way. Change the cross of your fingers and same thing, circle your wrists. And circle your wrists the other direction. Good, shake your hands. All right, so we're gonna do a seated twist. It's a very much a, of a yoga pose. I like to sit on a roll blanket. Bend your right knee and place the foot. If it's comfortable, you keep it here if it's better or have it on the other side of the leg. The left leg can be straight, or if you're used to this Ardha Matsyandrasana pose, you can bend the knee. I'm going to keep it straight to show you the easier variation. Have your right knee up. You can wrap the arm around the right knee. The left, uh, sorry, the right hand is behind you. Inhale, lengthen the spine. You want to lengthen and then exhale, you rotate your torso to the right. You can turn your le your head, sorry, turn your head to look over your right shoulder. And if your left leg is straight, keep your foot flexed. Lift your chin a bit. I like this pose because you're pushing the leg against the belly and breathe with the belly. So you may feel the belly pushing into the leg. Inhale, and when you're exhaling, come back to center. Let's do a little counter, 
twist. So bring your, don't move your legs, just bring your hands on the left side and mini kind of twist. You can turn your head a little bit to the left if it's comfortable. And come back to center. You can bring the right leg straight, a little shake in your legs. Bend your left knee, bring the foot over. And again, if you want to fold your bottom knee, you can do that. Or you can keep your right leg straight like I'm going to demonstrate. Right hand holding the knee or the arm, left hand behind you. Start to flex your right foot if your leg is straight. Inhale, get tall before you rotate. Lengthen the spine. And as, ex as you're exhaling, rotate slightly to your left. Rotating from your mid-back, your chest, shoulders are down. Turn your head if it's comfortable. Lift your chin. Deep breath in. As you're exhaling, come back to center. Bring your hands on the other side for a little counter twist here. And then come to, come to have your legs straight, shake your legs, point and flex your feet. And just slide your hands down the legs, coming to a gentle forward bend. Relax your arms, relax the shoulders, tuck your chin in. As you're going down, keep lengthening the spine. If you're pushing your sitting bones on your on the floor, on the blanket, wherever you're sitting. And slide your hands back up. Bring your hands behind you. Open your heart. Deep breath in. And exhale. You can cross your legs or bring your legs straight. I'm going to keep them like this, actually. Bring your hands in front of your heart. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Another deep breath in. And as you're exhaling, you can bow forward and thank yourself for taking the time to take care of yourself. Thanking each other. Have a good day. And namaste. See you next time.